Hello and welcome to something different today because I wanted to do this for a while. Uh, this is the second time I'm recording this because for some strange reason the first time I recorded it uh, there was an encoding error and I lost my files. On the bright side I think my thoughts uh, should be a lot clearer this time around. So I wanted to do this for a while where I wanted to talk about one of my previous work. <laughs> work like some sort of professional level thing um one of my previous pieces that i did uh i wasn't very happy about for a lot of reasons uh then recently there was this whole thing where you know some some uh, friends came over and then they were talking about like uh, you know growing uh, in art and all that kind of stuff so i thought i'd make this video thing i'm not sure if it's going to be serious maybe it will um I'm considering calling it just redlining, uh, but where I'm just going to redline my own work, unless somebody wants me to critique their work, which I really doubt people would want, but if, you know, I'm not against that option. Uh, so this is more for my own note-taking than anything, I would say, because I feel like a lot of times if you you just internalize it like, oh, I should do this next time. Uh, you know, it's kind of like uh, you may forget. Whereas if you actually take the time to make a video about it and all that, there's a lot of effort that goes into it. So hopefully I helps, it helps me remember uh, to watch out for certain things. Do note that everything I see here is kind of like a apprentice kind of level, uh, uh, study level kind of thing. If you actually want to know the fundamentals of painting, fundamentals of art, all kinds of art, uh, there are a lot of teachers in the description box below which uh, have their breakdowns and stuff. Go and follow them, go and learn from them. They teach you everything you need to know. These are, again, as a disclaimer, personal notes for myself because of some reasons that I'll talk about at the end. Right, so to begin, when I initially designed this picture, or I initially made this picture, uh, I didn't really have this. It, this was it. This was it. What you're seeing now was the end product. I actually didn't intend to have a background. So the horizon line is around here, give or take. And uh, that, that was it. You know, I, I built this image just for the two characters to react to this uh, ladybug beetle kind of thing. But along the way, I thought to myself, you know what? I should add a background. And so I started adding a background, took a few steps, and then it became this. However, when I got to this point, I started to panic because I realized one of the major things I didn't do, again, mostly due to the lack of planning, because when I initially designed this, it was just the two characters. I didn't intend to have a background. I didn't intend to have any other elements in the picture itself. It was just the two characters reacting to this bug thing, right? Um, but as I started editing the backgrounds, I started panicking because I realized, oh no, I messed up the values because now his brightness, this character's brightness, is almost the same as all this. And that just detracts from the image itself because it just kills the whole contrast between the characters and the background. Uh, so that's something I definitely messed up on. The other thing is the light direction. Uh, if you notice carefully, this leaves and all that, these leaves, and the way these are shaded there, this would mean that the light is coming from here, right? Except that this thing is also lit this way, so the light is coming from here right and then this is lit from here so that means us the viewer is projecting light this way right also downwards right so there's light here there's light here there's light here that means light is coming from here as well so the question then becomes where the hell is the light coming from <laughs> if the light is ambient being that uh, you can like just gesture to see if you can see my hands but if the light is ambient meaning it's all around then the way the lighting should be done wouldn't be like this. It would be more about the light bouncing and being lit from under and all that kind of stuff. The other thing was because the I have no focal point for the light. I didn't focus on where the light was coming from directly. Uh, I didn't craft the image properly. Honestly, if the light was coming from behind, which was the initial idea, this should have been way brighter, right? And then they should be lit from here, at least some rim lighting, right? 
around here, around here. Uh, maybe you can do this around here. Just cheat a bit. It's fine. Um, you know, uh, th this part should be definitely brighter because it's lower. He's lower than the bush here, right? Uh, or you even can add some shadows. Make sure, you know, kind of like a let some of the leaves kind of overshadow this part. But it definitely would have given more direction. This whole section would have been a lot darker. Well, maybe up to here. Would have been a lot darker. Um, instead of being lit like this. So I kind of panicked. Because um, I realized that the values weren't coming together properly. Uh, the only few things that I'm really happy about in this image were the way I rendered this. The legs. Right? Uh, I'm very happy with that. I'm very happy with the face. Uh... Could have been, some things could have been done better, but I'm really happy with this little crease that I added here. There's a bit of a creasing there, where it gives him kind of like an incredulous expression. So I'm quite happy about that. Uh, I did like the way the fence looked, kind of, right? But I didn't give it enough room to breathe. Uh, but my favorite thing out of this whole image, and it was an afterthought, which is the craziest part, was actually this thing. This post thing this was added at the end after i had done everything else because i realized my picture had a lot of straight lines see one straight line straight line oh sorry hold on a straight line here and it's a straight line here and then a bunch of straight lines here and there so there was a bunch of straight lines all over the place i thought to myself wow that's a lot of straight lines right see over here straight line this is actually a straight line here you see this this is actually a straight line here as well so there's a lot of straight uh, straight line elements here um, I decided to add a circular element here because we don't really have any circles in the picture, right? See, there are no actual, like, uh, circle shapes. Even my character's design is actually built around the idea of a triangle. So, again, more straight lines, see? It's actually built with the idea of a triangle. An X more than a triangle, but, you know, just keep it simple. It's a triangle. Um... So I decided to add a circular element, and I'm really happy I did add this, because then it balanced, or it, it gave a kind of a relief kind of feeling to the whole image. So I'm really happy about this. But honestly, this is about the only thing I'm really happy about in the image. Uh, I lost a lot of steam along the way, because as I realized that I was making mistakes, I was just making it worse, and I was like... I got so lazy with the, the leaves because of that because I was I just knew I was making it worse. I was not going anywhere with it. But I kept slogging away trying to you know trying to make it better. Internally, you kind of know when a piece is not going right. You, you feel it. Uh, but a lot of times I I I don't know about you guys who work on this, if you're watching this, I don't know about you guys, but I kind of wanna, you know, I should give it a uh, give it a good try. And so I keep working at it and then keep frustrating myself because it's not turning out right. Why? Well, because the fundamentals were wrong. The baseline of the image was wrong. I didn't plan uh, for for all of these elements. I didn't plan for any of this. I only wanted to make these characters, and it was supposed to be in an, uh, kind of like a... Uh, yeah, I, I, I hesitate to use the word a uh, reference sheet kind of thing, but it's basically a standalone kind of thing. Uh, even the beetle was done wrong in the sense that initially this thing was a kind of a maroon, dark maroon, brownish, earthy kind of color. But then I realized it was a bit too close to this, to the ground color, right? And with this kind of value, let me see if I can uh, match it here. So if you, if you check your, your value of the scale here, so I just have this uh, pure white... Uh, uh, overlay kind of thing we're set to color so it gives it oops not normal color sorry i blinded flash banged everyone so here's the thing so here's the color mode and it just gives a very good gray scale initially the beetle was around this kind of uh hold on let me all layers current layer was around this kind of shade but notice if i were to paint it over let's just really block it in with this kind of shade, right, okay, notice that it just kind of fades away into the background then. It just kind of merges very well with the background. So one of the things that I wanted to avoid was to merge it 
color wise or value wise as they call it uh, into the background because then it will just flatten the image then you don't know where it is in in, re- in relation to the characters the the beetle is supposed to be in front of the characters I cheated by doing this because I wanted to kind of show that oh you know it's uh oh the beetle is in front of the character so therefore the launch point was around here so they, they kind of know like oh uh, the, you know it's flying straight at him um, but I think, or I believe, if I were to remove this line, actually, I might be able to do that right here. Let's find out uh, live on camera. Let's find out if I can do that. All right, so if I were to remove this, I feel like you lose all sense of position. <laughs> on the, uh, yeah, you kind of lose all sense of position. You don't know where this thing is relative to anything. Um Especially if you have this color, uh, this this kind of same uh, value going on, uh, the details are, you know, details are secondary to values. Uh, like the oh Jesus, <laughs> how professional! You know, you have your phone running while uh, while you're recording. Yeah, that's great. Sorry about that. So about the values again. So this whole situation came about because I didn't plan it properly. I didn't. Uh, I didn't build it from the ground up. I kind of like just slapdash together everything. Um, and uh, it turned out the way it did. So personally, really uh, quite unhappy with this. But it is, of course, self-inflicted. So uh, I, you know, posted it and stuff. Oh, yes. Uh, beyond further, further more. After I realized that the characters were blending a little bit too well, uh, like we initially mentioned, see, it looks the same, same value, same value, right? I decided to darken the character with two multiplier layers, which just darkens the image, right? They're different colors, but the point is it still darkens the image. And um, then I encountered a different problem. See, shadows are relative to where light is. Now that I have darkened the characters in a way that makes the light very clearly coming from here very clearly the light is coming from above but wait a second what is this there's this thing here right okay so this 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 thing is supposed to be this uh you're supposed to be kind of like an under the bridge kind of feeling right so there's this thing here and there's this wall here definitely it connects somewhere above right so that would mean this whole area should be cast in shadow. Now, if this whole area is cast in shadow, I mean, let's say I'm up to here, right? If you really want to nitpick it, maybe it should be up to here. Even though it probably won't because how wide a normal uh, bridge, say a uh, highway bridge, would be. Uh, it will definitely stretch past the image, the canvas. So the thing is, it should have a cutoff point around here, if anything else, right? So this whole zone should be in shadow, right? It should be in shadow, but no. See, the problem is, when I panicked and decided to darken everything, this became very bright, right? So this kind of stood out. So it made it seem like the light was coming from here. And they're all pointing towards the character for some reason. It, that's how light works. Uh, so that didn't help. That didn't help at all. Uh, it actually made it worse. Even though it made the character pop out a little bit more due to this area being darkened. Uh, unfortunately, it broke all the fundamentals, uh, all the rules that uh, that I was trying to, to intone. Uh, and then not to mention that if the light was coming from here, right? That means it's from, slightly from the back, right? then this character should be in shadow because he's standing in the shadow of this character. So then there should be a bit of cross-contouring here. Maybe. Maybe. The reason why I say maybe is because, again, this wasn't part of the plan, the initial plan. Um, and I'm not very good at uh, spontaneity. Spontaneity? Yeah, spontaneity. So it kind of got really lost after that. So this whole area just got really messy. Here's the other problem. I am trying to circumvent a problem by using effects, basically, you know, just multiply all that effects. Uh, it doesn't help when your fundamentals are wrong, and it also doesn't help when you already have shadows in your painting. Like, you're just layering extra shadows like this. 
It just doesn't work. For this, again, again, it will probably work for other styles of painting. Like I'm doing cell shading, like how I would normally paint with the, um, you know, just just like a, a bit of shade here and then another, another layer of multiply here. It would probably work depending on the style. This particular style that I'm using, this particular style that I'm going for, it didn't work because adding all this just made it look a lot messier. And then suddenly this bright area becomes a mid dark area but then if it's a mid dark area it should blend properly with uh, the other shadows but it's not it's not playing nice with them it's still standing on its own it's still being its own thing uh and also there's this random triangle element here which uh, i really should have blended in um but yeah it, it kind of just really went all wrong uh the other thing i think now that i'm looking at this i realized was a mistake was that this bush here makes it looks like the, the it's kind of like curving in right it's kind of curving in and to a to a valley area here this isn't wrong per se but if that was the case that says curving in this is the ground i should probably have cut like a, a path that connects this ground to this area right probably should have done that uh, but I didn't do that, so that was a mistake. Also, the other thing is perspective-wise is wrong because the horizon line should be around here. It kind of went up a bit as I painted because I, you know, panicked. Uh, so the perspective line, the horizon line is somewhere around here, which means that if we're looking, uh, we're looking from above, honestly, all this should be the same height-ish. And then maybe some of the leaves should actually stick out closer towards the character. Uh, but again... All this because fundamentally I did not plan the image from the beginning. All right, so the next part is part two. You can that was uh, my red line for this current work. So I'm going to show you a work that I am really proud of uh, or really happy the way it turned out. And there are some mistakes. I'm going to run you through it. So here we go. This is the second part where the. Uh, where I did this painting, I think yesterday or day before yesterday, and by the time this goes up, probably about oh, probably about three days ago. Um, I really like this piece for multiple reasons, and I am also going to do a red line of this. Hold on, let me do the color and saturation. First and foremost, this value th system kind of thing, where the darks and lights, way stronger than this. You can tell if I put this side by side. Hopefully the stream is capturing it sorry i have to pull that up for a bit um you can see the two values are very different for this image everything's just kind of all over the place. It's, it's light here it's dark here it's dark here it's dark here and it's light here again and it's just light here out of the blue one island here and then it's just like oh look all these spots of light here just god knows why whereas this image everything is kind of in its place so you've got the shadows area, the deep area here, the light, the mid-tones here. And it just gets a bit lighter here. And then you've got the, the far kind of feeling. This is very bright here. And then it gets a bit darker here. This is where it's kind of uh, coming back around, I would say. Uh, so this is the lightest part of the, 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 the painting. I'm uh, really happy with this because of the way the tones were divided. Uh, let's see. Let's hide this for now. Right. What I would have done better, or should have done better, or uh, in retrospect, now that I'm looking at this now, in the now, is that I probably could have moved all this, this dark area, around here. The reason being, if I had moved it down here, it would have divided the image into a kind of a nice-ish flow, kind of, right? Uh, these these are things, mind you, mind you. I want to make another disclaimer here. These are things I am personally still learning. I'm just giving you again. Remember, these are notes, personal notes I'm taking, telling myself as well, more than anyone else. So for those of you who are watching this, if you can learn anything from it, please learn and please be better. That's all I'm saying. This is where I am. Uh, I'm not bothered about that. I will grow because I have grown before. Uh, that's all I have to say about that. But, back to how this works. So I'm really happy with this division. I'm really happy with this division here. Yeah. This kind of actually cuts in this way, right? 
I'm happy with the shapes I use here. So, you know, it's a very nice division. So it's got uh, dark to mid to uh, lighter to the lightest to... And then it goes back to, to around this kind of value. Same, same, same value, right? It's the same kind of value. So um, it kind of flows from one to the other. It kind of uh, goes in a, uh, in a progressive kind of state. So quite like that. I'm really happy with how that turned out. I'm also really happy how the character just stands out so strongly against this, this background and all that. Kind of shows that, the, oh, the character's like closer to the viewer, us the viewer, than it is to maybe these distant things over there. Um... What I could have done better. All right. What I could have done better. What I could have done better was definitely uh, the shaping of this and the perspective, I would say. Uh, the horizon line was around here, right? Because there, there, there are no real pointers. I didn't really leave any in. Um, the perspective life, if I remember correctly, is around here, right? Around where the knee comes up here, right? Okay. Um... Unfortunately, if the horizon line is there, then all this should be kind of pointing in that direction, at least, right? Which means that the this this kind of like brighter areas here, where it's supposed to be like kind of glowing algae, would grow along the edges, which is around, which is in that direction, give or take, give or take. At least these are the rules that I think uh, I think I should have applied a bit better. Now, you can make the argument that perhaps these, these things are just like fallen structures or something like that. That, 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 fine. that works fine. That works fine. Uh, I do like this rock thing because it kind of points in the general <laughs> direction. Uh, I didn't build this with two-point or three-point perspective in, in mind, so it's kind of flat, I feel. I should probably have done it uh, like in a, in a two-point perspective where maybe one is here, uh, one perspective is here and then the other one's like far off on the, the, the other side. Maybe, but I haven't reached that level of uh, skill where I can consciously activate or exercise that ability. So for now, it's a one-point perspective. And even then, I think I still messed up certain parts of it. Um, initially, this circular thing here, which is supposed to be kind of like a, uh, a void hole and it's pouring out this, this water that's flooding the world kind of thing... Uh, it was supposed to be this kind of like reflective globe. I kind of wanted, uh, the, these were the smaller versions, right? So I kind of wanted it to be like, oh, you see the water is floating upwards, right? And then have this kind of a globe reflecting everything. Uh, but you see the thing is, if I wanted to make the globe reflect things, it would reflect this side, right? So all this would be reflected in this, in this globe, which I felt at the time, well, two things. I didn't think I had it in me to uh, to render it properly. I did try, mind you. I did try. I don't do things without trying. Um, I don't give up without trying. I. Uh, but as I painted it, the other thing I realized was that it was detracting a lot of attention, taking a lot of attention away from the whole placid feeling of this character just sitting here, right? And because it's being reflected here, you you kind of like drawn. Your eyes are kind of drawn here, right? Because being a reflection, the lighter parts would be here, right? All the lighter parts, hold on, uh, I'm in the wrong mode, uh, select all layers. So the lighter parts would be reflected uh, like this, wouldn't it? See, it'll all be reflected like this, right? And then like this, and then uh, we kind of pick a, this kind of color, right? Then pick this kind of color. Right. It won't go too deep because you you know the, the reflection won't penetrate all the all the way down. Right. Then you maybe have a have a little bit just a, a little smidge of the character just sitting here, right? Right. I, I felt like it would detract from the piece because the whole uh, setting was built in such a finely tuned manner that the darks and the lights were quite well balanced at this point. I felt like if I added this value, it would just kind of draw a lot of attention in the wrong way uh, also i felt like it was a lot of a lack of uh, actual understanding personal understanding that uh, how how the actual uh, reflections wrap around the globe 
So I decided to skip that altogether, go for something that I understood, which is basically a void hole in the sky. Uh, you know, I was pouring water down and all that. Um, initially, the initial concept for this piece didn't have any of these elements. In fact, the, the piece was actually designed this way, upside down. Uh, I might attempt it in the future, but I'm trying to find something to work into the image before I do that. And the concept was basically this, where the it was a kind of a close-up, where the character was head was in the water, right? And then maybe the shoulders come out here, right? right? And then it's just kind of like looking up and then maybe the mouth is slightly open and then, you know, you're going to have like breath bubbles coming out and then he's just going to look really serene. It's not going to be like drowning, but it's like kind of serene. Um, so I, I wanted to do that, but along the way, I felt like the image read a lot better that way, this way, right? I felt the image looks a lot better this way, the way it ended up. Uh, I do want to attempt this concept again one day where the uh, character's head is in the water and the water is um, not flowing down, it's flowing up, right? So it's kind of like a reverse kind of thing where I'll have like little water bubbles kind of sliding up here maybe and then just like all connecting to this this great um, uh, sea ocean thing. Right, so I wanted to do that, but then along the way, it's like uh, couldn't get it right. So I decided to settle for something I can do first, and then I'll reattempt it in the future. Uh, hopefully, <laughs> that's always the hope. Uh, I could have done maybe this better in a sense. I could have probably added like a bit of splashing, a bit of a bit of uh, like water droplets kind of floating off. I still wanted to maintain the anti gravity kind of feel where the water bubbles or the water droplets kind of floated upwards and all that. Uh, but again, for the same reason why I didn't do it for the reflecting globe in the middle is because I thought it would detract too much from the scene itself. Uh, the other thing I also wanted to do was add like uh, aster, A-S-T-E-R flowers uh, to these things. Because it, unless I, I got the species wrong, because I, I just had it in my head, I didn't actually look it up at that time, was that aster flowers were white, were small and white flowers. So yellowish kind of white. And then I thought they would look really nice uh, floating on the surface of the ocean kind of thing. Um, again, same reason. I felt they would detract from the whole serenity of the piece, so I didn't put it in. Uh, maybe I could have, now that I'm thinking about it, but yeah, I... Yeah, you know, retrospect, hindsight, blah, blah, blah. Um, so I wanted to have like aster flowers floating here because uh, when you're working with very light yellowish colors, what is really fun about that, let's say it's around, eh, it's a bit too, too colored. Uh, let's see, yeah, something like this, right? So this, let's say it's a base, it's like this. You can very easily just add on, you know, like uh, if I want to match the sky, so the sky's uh, slightly pinkish, so it'll be slightly towards the yellow, slightly, sorry, slightly towards the red, actually. So it'll be around here, and you can reflect the, the sky just very gently. You don't, you don't really have to do a lot of that. And then the best part is, because the water is blue, right, it'll take on some properties of the water. So it should be around, let's see, reflection. Let's move it slightly towards green. And then all the petals would reflect a little bit of the water, and I felt that would be a really cool scene. I mean, that's a bit too dark, but uh, uh, something like this. Yeah, something like this, right? Okay, that's even without the highlights. So each of those petals would have something like this, right? Uh, but then as I thought about it more, I was like, eh, then I have to do do like a few in the foreground. So I was thinking maybe I should do some some in the foreground, maybe one here, maybe one here, uh, then maybe one one being cut off, one cut off here, and then just like a, a few smaller ones here, and then just like a whole sea, very small, very small specks of white flowers all the way towards the shoreline over there, that very far away, right? But again, we encounter the problem of it detracting from the whole value of uh, composition that we have going. So I decided, you know what, okay, let's not do that right now. Uh, maybe in the future I'll try it out and see if it functions. Uh, so yeah, anyway, that's been my thought process on my reflection of this piece. Um, I'm very happy with this. 
I can see a lot of areas that still need to be worked on. Uh, so I'm definitely looking forward to doing more of these kinds of uh, emotive, expressive pieces than anything. Uh, so this last part, this whole last part is just going to be me rambling about why I'm doing this. Uh, so we can call it quits here if you're just here to learn or look at something that uh think you know listen to my thought process then uh this is where it ends um the next part is just why so the biggest reason why i'm doing this is because um there are a lot of people who are very good about um receiving criticism from other people right they, they're very good about that uh and they grow really fast that's great that's absolutely fine and i would urge if any of you can do that please please do that if you you can receive criticism and balance it internally right without feeling discouraged definitely go and receive as much criticism as you need for your own growth you don't care about them it's not about them it's not about uh, what they say about your work it's about how fast you want to grow i have a personal issue in this area it is a weakness I have a personal weakness in this area where I'm not, I don't trust people's criticism. Uh, mind you, I'm saying like people out there. I have a circle of friends that do critique my work uh, privately, but it is a trust that's been built up for over 10, 12, 13 years. So it's a long time coming. So when they actually tell me something, I, I do take it into account because I have built up that, uh, or they have built. Uh, this is layer of level of trust over the course of a long period of time. Um, so if I'm not the type that goes out and puts my work out and says, burn me people, you know, criticize me, roast me. Uh, I don't like that. I, I don't like that. Um, especially sometimes when you, when you do an emotive piece that actually isn't really about the piece it's just you just want to express and then someone comes in and, oh, you, you didn't do this right it, it kind of hurts right so i have this problem i'm not saying it, it i'm not saying like, oh you know oh you poor baby but the point is i have this problem uh it's, you know working on it on the side but the point is while i'm doing it what is the best option i have so you're someone like me if this resonates with you and you understand this then you're like oh uh i feel this way i that i'm scared to hear other people's criticisms of my work because i'm afraid they're going to tear me down then here's what i do if it works for you please take it if it doesn't work for you find something that do, does work for you because this is about your growth it's not about me it's not about anyone else it's about your own growth i do this uh, I'm very hypercritical of my own work because I know I don't have the, uh, let's call it the pull, the ability to to, to put it out there and, and try to receive people's criticisms uh, in, a, in, a, in a graceful manner, let's put it that way. Um, so I have this thing where I am very hypercritical or re rather I would say hyper aware of the faults of my work because I have to be knowing that I have this other side which is the weakness of not receiving criticism from random strangers from people that i don't know and i don't know what i can trust and all this discouragement over the years uh, that have been built up over the years so i become very hyper aware of my own shortcomings and i do this this exact thing just that this is the first time i'm recording it hopefully it helps people um so i redline my own work a lot in my head i look at it okay this is wrong this is wrong why is this wrong um because I have to rely on my hyper awareness or what I'm aware of, reflect self reflection. Let's put it that way, even better. Uh, I have to rely on my own self reflection to know that certain things are still wrong, so that I don't fall into a pattern of let's call it complacency. Um, because I want this to work. I have something I'm working towards. So I have a a, a desire to to create something in the future, um, and. If I can't rely on people to help guide me in a sense or help balance me in a sense, then I must rely on what I have. And what I have is this awareness that I, uh, what many would call the uh, self criticism, right? A lot of, uh, yeah, they, they kind of conflate it a lot with uh, self doubt and all that. But the point is that I'm aware of the faults that I have. And uh, if you're the type of person who's afraid of, other people's criticism then you must at least have this if you want to grow if you want to stay where you are that's absolutely fine that's up to you 
No one can tell you otherwise. That's up to you. Uh, do so as you wish. Art is given, or the ability to draw, the ability to paint is freely, you know, exists. It just exists. You know, if it's yours, it's yours. Paint how you wish, you know, draw how you wish. No one, uh, you can't get people to tell you how to draw, how to paint if you don't want to. If you want to grow, if you want to do certain things, then certain things you, you, you have to take certain steps. You know, you can't make a pancake with, I can't think of an analogy. Uh, you know, you can't make a pancake with cheddar. <laughs> Someone's going to be in the comments like, but actually, you can make pancakes with cheddar. Yeah, anyway, the point being that if you can't rely on the other thing, then you must rely on your own um, ability to reflect and ability to have introspection where you look inside like, okay, I've got this, this is wrong, this is wrong, why is this wrong, and how do I get to where I want to go? So I feel that that's important, uh, especially where growing and developing art is concerned. That was my alarm, and that was my time to go. Uh, anyway, I hope this does help. The There is a list of teachers in the description box below. These are actual teachers. Uh, these are industry professionals. Uh, most of them, I think. I'm trying to remember off the top of my head. Uh, they teach various things. I do give a breakdown on uh, what each teacher uh, focuses on. Uh, so if you want to develop technical skills and all that, please go and look at them. They're very useful. They're very good. Uh, I'm just going to continue doing this kind of stuff, maybe because it's good for me. And as I'm enunciating it out to the world, uh, you know, the, to, to, to the degree the beyond, uh, it is helping me keep track of certain things that I'm uh, doing wrong artistically or uh, things that I can improve on. So I'll probably just be doing this on the side. So I would suggest if you have or you see any of the teachers down there, you think you can uh, learn from them, please go and learn from them. Uh, take what they have, take what they're offering, and uh, excel in your own right. Well, that was a long one. Hopefully this one comes out well, because uh, if the recording gets screwed up again, I am going to be extremely disappointed. I'll see you guys next time.